All right, welcome back to Photo Mechanic 6. And today we're gonna to take a look at variables and code replacement and a few other things inside of the program. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is I have this ingest window back up. And in this case, I'm going to upload basically just only one image, but I'm gonna be doing it by using the folder, all right? I'm not ingesting the disk. So already I have an image inside of a folder on a hard disk and we're going to ingest that way. We could do it from a selection as well, but we'll just use the folder, it doesn't make a difference. So I've got my traditional variable here and we're gonna get more into variables, so don't worry, I don't wanna change this because it kind of screws me up when I do it. Right here, I've got a job set up and I've got this information filled out. And now normally I would fill out all of it, but we've just got variables code replacement so we can do that information. We've also got the user, so user one, client one. I'm user, this is client one, because we're going to use my name here in a variable to import it. So let's go ahead and hit okay. We have to have that stuff filled out for most of this to work. So let's go ahead and take a look. So what I've done is I've just selected a folder, all right? It's gonna go to the same location that we had before, which is my working hard drive. I'm going to open up my metadata template and we're gonna kind of go through a blank one and fill this out. So hopefully it will make a little bit of sense. So what I've done here is I've just written a really boring basic caption. And if you notice down here, inside these brackets, I have the word caption. So that is a variable. And I got that by coming down here to where variables are and I click that and it brings up this window. And you will notice that not only when you click on a variable does it give you the information up here, but we've got camera variables. And I'll try to go through this and get all the ones. So we've got Nikon picture control. We've got the IPTC fields. We've got time. We've got ICC. We've got special. GPS user client, that was that job area that I was just in, and then Getty, these are specific for Getty. Now, we can use any of these variables to auto input fields here. So let's take a look how we did it. So caption was really easy, I just went to caption and filled it out. So what that's gonna do is take, when I make this caption, it's gonna put this caption in the alt text. Alt text is one of those SEO fields that it will be able to grab from. So if you have an extended description or you wanna put caption writers, so in this case, caption writers could be something that we use. So I can go ahead and tick that and let's make a variable. So I am the user and I'm user number one. So if we go down here, can we find user number one? And right here we have username. It will tell me that this is the username and I'm just gonna double click it and it will add that to that field because that's where the field was selected. Headline. So headline in this case, I a lot of times use job name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double click job name. I need to make sure that I tick it first though. So go ahead and hit job name, add that there. Keywords, all right? Keywords can be variables a lot of times. So in this case, I could use the job name, which is variables. So I can come in here and hit job name for that. And that would be one comma. You can do a space. What else could we do? Well, we could do, let's say, the client's name. So I can come down here to client name and add that there. And you could do this as often as you want, as well as just manually put in a variable. And in this case, we'll put test, okay? Person shows any of this information. So creator photographer will come in here. Who is that? That's username. Look, I could easily also just put my name in here and that would work. Any way you would wanna do it doesn't make a difference. So we'll just hit username, title, so owner. I could fill that out. All right, copyright. In this case, I'm gonna do John Whitehead images because it would be the business. Credit, and in this case, credit, I normally put my name, so I could put username, or I could just, in this case, just fill it out because it's gonna stay the same all the time, so it's not like it needs to change. So you don't really need a variable on something, but we would do John Whitehead or we could do John Whitehead. I'm just gonna do John Whitehead comma, John Whitehead images, can't spell. 
we can fill out rights or usage terms and I'll just put no rights. That's not for me. That's for somebody else who would have it. And you can go through all this stuff and fill it out. So you'll notice up here, event location, the city. So I have cities already set up here. So I could just, that this was in Harrisburg, or I could use a variable to import it from the address of the user or client. But a lot of times the client is not having the event at their location. It's a different location. So a lot of times I will just kind of manually fill this out. I would normally do state, country, and all that information, but I think people get what's going on here. Same thing with the date. So I use date of today versus capture time because usually I'm doing it, but I can easily override that or change it. There's all kinds of information in here. There's all kinds of information here. We've got some models and property and artwork and licensing and contact information if someone needs to get to you. So but you see what's going on with these variables. I've got all this stuff that I can auto input anywhere just about into the metadata of my image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click off variables and I'm going to close the template because it saved it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead now and ingest. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit ingest. Oh, there's my one single image. All right, let's go ahead and open that up. And so now you could see it auto imported the caption down here. It's got my name, it's got the headline, all that stuff auto imported just by using the variables. Really cool stuff. Next thing we're gonna go into is what we call code replacement. So let me close this because we need to import it. And the way you import into code replacement is you go to edit, settings, set code replacement. You can see I've already got one in there. All right, we're in here with code replacement. Now you can see I've already got the code replacement in here, but if you wanna remove it, you just need to select it and hit remove. And then if you wanna add it, you click add and you would go to your text document and you will open it. So I'm gonna show everybody how to create the code replacement text document. But what we need to look at is this eliminator character. I'll show you in just a second what this means and how you use it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay and get rid of this. And let's take a look at my code replacement document. All right, so this is just a plain document and look how exciting it is. Nope, not exciting at all. So up here we've got, and this is our code. So in this case, I've got the word Jim and then I hit tab, this is in sport. This is important. You need to hit tab and then you're gonna put what you want it to say or replace. In this case, I want it to say Jim Jones. In this next one, I have P-R-O-C. So that's the first letters of this guy's last name. And what it's gonna replace and say right here is lead designer Paul Proctor, all right? All right, so this is a basic text document. It must be. T X T a text document, nothing fancy. And what you're doing in code replacement is first you're creating codes and my codes are all the stuff over here on the left hand side. Okay. And what the code is going to say once you add it is this information here. I've got the code of J I M. All right. And if I hit equals, J-I-M equals, it will replace that with Jim Jones. The next one is P-R-O-C, which is the first four initials of this guy's name. And if I hit equals, P-R-O-C, it will replace that with lead designer, comma, Paul Proctor. So anything you have in the left-hand column is kind of the code. And what you want it to replace is after this. So this is really popular in sports. You'll see it in a lot of times in sports, you'll kind of have like a small version. You'll notice that this one up here just says quarterback Andre West, but it also could say Westchester University quarterback Andre West number seven. I have put an E after that to make that extended. So I would hit WC7 for quarterback Andre West. And if I wanted the extended version, I would hit equals WCU7E equals and it would replace it with the longer version of that, all right? So I do a lot of work for healthcare and boy are healthcare titles long. 
Like it takes me three or four times longer to write the caption than it does to tone the photos because I have to look them up all the time. So what I've done is I've created code replacement and then I have pictures and stuff of all the people. Basically, I just need to type in a few characters like in this one long, and then we can replace it with Marie Important, CEO, COO, President and more important titles, Chair of this and Chair of that. So I can replace it with all that information. And believe me, they're way longer than what you see here. What you wanna do is just go ahead and save this out, not as an RTX, as a TXT document, all right? And then you saw when we were here, we went to edit, back down to settings, and we went to code replacement, and that's what I imported here, that code replacement box that we see right there. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit okay. We're gonna go up here to the little dog, click on the little I, cause we'll get some information and we'll just go in this basic panel right here. So if we remember and we go back, we remember we have the WCU7E. I can go ahead and copy that. Normally I have the list printed on a piece of paper. So I just look at it and type it. But for this, it's just a little bit easier if we remember it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit equals. So you can see right there, we've got an equals. And then I'll just paste that other information. And then now, when I hit this deliminator key, I'm gonna hit equals again. It's going to replace it with the code, boom. Just like that, we now have Westchester University quarterback, Andre West, number seven. So that's the basics of code replacement. So if you shoot a football team, a basketball team, any sort of sports over and over and over again, instead of having to type out all that information, you can easily create your own code replacement. Now, there are places out there, if you shoot professional sports and college sports, that will create the code replacement for you. For instance, if you were shooting Alabama against Georgia, you would just go to the site, tell them that you wanted Alabama, and Georgia's rosters, then you would be able to download the code replacement text file so I could load the code replacement into the system. And then when I got to the image and it, let's say it was quarterback and number seven for Alabama, I would hit equals and maybe some sort of code for Alabama, which might be AL, let's say. The player's number seven and the equal key again. And then basically it would fill that in and that's how you would get all the names. This is especially helpful when it's the team that you're playing against and you don't really know who anybody else is. There are some other things that are really cool inside the program. So as a journalist, a lot of times you might need to then send your final images. And obviously these would be toned, not your raw images to your client or back to a newspaper or wherever. And they have FTP built into the system. So FTP stands for file transfer protocol. And if you have one of those, it's really easy. You would click here on file, go to FTP photos as, which is command U, and then it would bring up the information. Obviously you would need to fill this out and you could have a multiple connections. Like you could have one to like this user, another one to this user, another one to this user. It doesn't make a difference. And basically once you've got it filled out and logged in, you would just hit send and bam, just like that. You could send one image or in this case, a lot of times multiple images at the same time makes it really easy to send photos to clients as long as they give you access to an FTP site. So let's see what else is in these windows. And look, there's a lot of stuff that's in here and really doesn't kind of have an icon. Another important thing that you should notice is when you're in here to the right hand side, there's all kinds of little numbers over here. And all this information are your quick keys. So if you want to close the contact sheet tab on my computer, it's command W. If you are on a PC, it would probably be control W, but you would need to look that up. So if you're not sure what the quick keys are, and you'll notice that I almost always use quick keys, they are available. So let's see what else is available here. So we can create a new window, which is just going to be a new one of these. 
we can create a new contact sheet. Open a contact sheet, we can open recent. So you can see I have some things there, I could open those. I can close all the windows. So this is just a manual way to get ingest, ingest from a selection. You could do a live ingest. So if you were tethered to your camera, you could do that live. You can rename your photos. You can copy and move your photos. You can delete photos. You can even save your photos. Yes, so I can hit save as and bam, this little window comes up right here and I can fill that information out. You can see I do use this for stuff. And then you would just hit save and you can save one or multiple images. You just have to make sure that the images are all selected if you want to do multiples. We can send photos via email, FTP, we can upload images, we can export images, we can import GPS coordinates. Down here is page setup and print, which we're not going to get into because that's pretty obvious. So we're back. Before we go ahead and take a look at the edit menu drop down here, um, yeah, I had a big stain, so I had to switch my shirt. But is this little window something that people like or do you care if it's on there? Do you not care if it's on there? Hey, let me know in the comments if this is something that you want me to see. Does it need to be bigger? Because right now I have it teeny tiny. Doesn't make a difference to me. Whatever you want is what I will do. So let's come up here to the edit menu. Now look, a lot of the edit menu is either not selected or it's stuff that we've really already learned. This is just kind of a manual way to select it. A lot of this is really self-explanatory. If you wanted to find something, you hit this. If you want to find or replace something, you click on this. So I've got select all. We can't copy and paste because we haven't selected anything. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and take a look at the color classes. Now I told you before, here are all those color classes that we had. We have the quick keys, which are command one. But I have it so I can just hit one, not command one. So either way you're doing it, this is all stuff that is controllable. You can also change the color to a different color and you can change it from red to selected. Whatever you want to do, it doesn't really make a difference. If you want to use these stars, here's the star information. If that is something that you're interested in, all your quick keys are going to be located over here. Obviously, we have other options by select by date range, but this is all stuff that you can kind of do up here anyway. So there's no real reason to do it. So you can load a selection, save a selection. This is where those settings are that we saw for things like code replacement. Options for spelling, dictation, and other stuff there. So image, we can rotate our images. The quick keys are over here, but we've got rotate right on the screen. So there's really no reason to come up here and do any of that stuff. Edit photos. There's the quick key that I tend to use, which is command E. It would be probably be control E on a PC. You can see right here, I edit with Photoshop. All that stuff is right here. So we've got view, different ways to view your images. So we can view all, we can do the selected, tagged, untagged, ones that have the colored ratings with one star or more. You can set this, but all that stuff is easily settable over here on the right-hand screen. So there's no reason to go in there and use it. Tools is something that might be helpful. So you can go into tools and you can adjust your capture dates and times if needed. You would need to select those to do that. You could change the resolution of an image. You can convert your image from RAW to DNG. So DNG is Adobe's digital negative if you needed to do that. So any of the information that you might need to change is available here inside of tools. So if you wanted to delete your metadata, bam, you click that, select the image, and it will all be gone. The last thing is the window, and there's not much here in the windows. This is just a really slick and well put together program. They're constantly updating this too. So I've had Photo Mechanic 6 since it came out. I'm not sure when that was. And I bet you they've had 12 or 14 updates. So they're constantly updating it for new OS software. Now, obviously, I only use a Mac, but it would also be done for a PC as well. Well, that's it for Photo Mechanic 6. Hey, it would be great if you found this video helpful and could give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you could obviously leave those below in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe.